What's going on YouTube? Christo here and I've got a review for you. This is on one of my new favorite summer fragrances. This is Dior's Escale e Portofino. And uh, I'm really in love with this fragrance, you know, I'm not going to hide it. Uh, this is one of my new babies and uh, I just had to get the word of this out there because uh, I don't know, virtually no one talks about it. Uh, so I really, really wanted to get word of it out there, especially in time for the summer, which will be coming up soon in um, North America, Europe. So let's get into this one. It was created in 2008 by the in-house perfume Francois Dimashi. It's listed as an EDT for women, and it is from Dior's Cruise Collection series. There are four fragrances from the line. Uh, this one is listed or categorized as a citrus aromatic, and yeah, it definitely, definitely fits very well. So the notes for this, in the top, we got a lot of citrus here. We got lemon, bergamot, petite grain. In the mid, we've got almond, orange blossom, and juniper berries. Then in the base, we've got some cedar, cypress, galbanum, musk, and caraway. Now, what are the most predominant notes to me? Definitely the citrus. There is a lot of citrus in this. And it's not just in the opening as well. Uh, definitely though, I think the orange blossom is the strongest uh, as well. There is quite a lot of bergamot in here. I do get a bit of difference between the opening and the middle, but I'll talk about that in a couple minutes. I do get a little bit of almond in this, uh, and to me the reason that I notice the almond is because it's the only really noticeable non-citrus note that I find for at least the first hour or two. It's the only thing that's not citrus that I can really pick up. Um, but uh, it's certainly not an overwhelming almond note, uh, so don't worry about that if you're not into almond. Bottle sizes, three sizes here. We got 75, 125, and a 200 mil. My bottle here, this is a 125. And the prices range from about 80 bucks for 75 mil up to about 150 or maybe even a little bit more for a 200 mil. Obviously, it depends where you buy and where you shop. Uh, the prices are higher than Dior's designer line, and they're slightly a bit less than the exclusive line, so they're kind of in the middle. Uh, these actually can be found. I shouldn't say easily, but they are available online discounted. Um, not heavily discounted, but um, you know, a little bit less than you would pay in a retailer, which, you know, uh, in my opinion, I would rather save 20 bucks and just buy from a discounter online, a reputable one, of course. Uh, very good uh, price for quality, I think. Very, very well made for what the price is. Now, opening and dry down, I got the dry down over here. So let's give a blast on my other hand, and I love this. Oh, yeah. Oh, so good. Amazing. I love it. The opening of this, uh, like the first hour of this fragrance, is just amazing. It's beautiful. Um, it's just full of citrus, and it's like really vibrant bright, sparkling citrus. It's very clean as well. Now, I definitely do get more green citrus in the first maybe 20, 30 minutes of this. And then a little bit later, uh, maybe about, yeah, 30 to 30 minutes to an hour in, it does uh, change, I think, to more yellow citrus. Now, the dry down, it's actually almost gone here, which kind of ruins the uh, longevity section of my review, but yeah, um, the base notes of this are really deceiving because they sound like they would be quite strong and perhaps even very masculine with uh, the cypress and the cedar and the musk, but honestly, I really don't get much woodiness out of this. Uh, I do definitely get a little bit of the musk and I do pick up the galbanum in it, but um, really uh, the cedar, cypress, and the caraway for that as well. I don't really honestly find it to be there. Um, maybe little hints of the cedar, but nothing that would make it, you know, 
I would describe as a prominent note. Uh, it's nothing I would describe if someone asked me what's it smell like. I would definitely not say anything about citrus or woods. But I think that actually might be good because I think it kind of keeps the focus on the citrus and that's exactly what I want. So what does this make me think of? Well, this makes me think of a perfume that a very classy, elegant woman would wear um, on herself after she got out of a uh, shower on a hot day. She'd be wearing a white ba uh, cotton bathrobe and she would have a splash bottle like a big um, kind of Chanel number no. 5 flacon kind of thing and she would just splash it on herself in copious amounts and you know just drench herself in it. That's exactly what this makes me think of. Um, uh, it's just so fresh and so clean and crisp and very classy as well I find. Um, yeah that's exactly what it makes me think of. Projection, well Actually, I think the projection is quite good at first. Uh, the first half hour of this, it's actually not bad. It's better than you would expect for the longevity, which I'll get to next. Um, but after about an hour, uh, it really, really sticks close to the skin. It burns up really quickly. Um, so you get kind of like a decent little cloud around yourself for like half an hour, an hour, and then after that, it sticks very, very close to your skin. Um, if it's even still there, um, I've definitely had very bad issues with longevity. So, longevity, uh, yeah, unfortunately I have to say below average to pour even two to four hours and I've even had less than two hours out of this um, and I've never had more than four. I've never had this last on my skin more than four hours. Without a doubt, it is the biggest downfall to this fragrance. Um, but uh, I'll talk about it a little more on the occasion. It's not actually a bad thing. So, uh, season, summer, definitely, 100%. This is, to me, this is the perfect summer fragrance for my climate in the hot, humid tropics. This is perfect, amazing for summer. Definitely, you could wear it in the um, spring as well, but I don't really see this working very well in cooler seasons. Okay, occasion, um, yeah, the thing that doesn't really bother me too, too much about the poor longevity out of this is that, to me, this is a perfect casual fragrance. After shower, before I go to bed, um, or if I'm on a holiday or something, I'll take this. Um, you know, I live in Indonesia, and when I go on holiday, I travel around to a lot of islands and stuff, and this is just, you know, it's perfect for that. And, you know, cruise collection, it's obviously not a coincidence that's kind of you know what the focus was meant to be on gender now this is marketed for women but to me it is very unisex okay it has a slight sweetness and there may be some white floral qualities that some fellows might pick up uh, I shouldn't say that, that they might be bothered by I'm I think you know there are some white floral qualities to this. I don't find them to be off-putting. I like white florals myself though, but you know, it obviously is taste. But yeah, I do think this is very, very unisex. I think this could be appreciated by a lot of guys out there, uh, especially ones that are into citrus. Really, really highly recommended for men and for women. Is this DR quality? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think this is actually better than a lot of expensive niche citruses I've tried. Um, honestly, I'll take this over Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino any day of the week. Absolutely, I wouldn't even think twice. Even uh, if you gave me Neroli Portofino for the same price, I would take this. It's just no question. It smells better. Um, I find it to be classier and more sophisticated. Uh, I'm not bashing Norelli Portofino, but for the price, uh, it's just not worth it. And like I mentioned, even if it was the same price as this, I'll take this. No question. I wouldn't even double guess. Uh, okay, good. What's good about this fragrance? Without a doubt, this is one of the best, if not the best, citrus scents I have ever ever tried. Uh, that's how much I love this. I think it is amazingly fresh, natural, 
and clean smelling without smelling like soap. That's kind of the thing I don't really like about Neroli Portofino. It just smells like kind of expensive citrus soap um, and that's why I like this more. Uh, as well, it's easier to find than many of the other Dior's of the similar range, uh, you know, meaning the above the designer range, uh, the exclusive line, and the other higher price Dior's, this, and the other from the Cruise Collection are a little bit easier to find. They're not readily available, you know, in boutiques all over the world, but um, yeah, it's easier to find than a lot of the stuff. This is a great summer scent for casual wear and in my opinion it also is a great price for the quality. You're looking at, you know, maybe even less than a dollar per mil and that's just, it's totally, totally worth it in my, in my books. Bad. What's bad about this fragrance? Well, yeah, you guessed it. Longevity, longevity, longevity. Um, I wish so badly that this would give me like even if it gave me a solid four hours, I would be happier. But it's just so random, two to four hours, I don't don't like that. Um, if this gave me six, I, this would be like my perfect summer fragrance, like flawless summer fragrance, but it's not, so it isn't. Also, um, if you are not into white florals or sweet citrus, um, it's not overly sweet, but um, if you want like a masculine citrus, uh, something like um, Eau Sauvage from Dior, not not going to do the same thing as that. Might be a bit too feminine for you. Recommended, who do I recommend this for? Well, any citrus lovers. If you love citrus, you absolutely need to try this. You seriously, seriously have to. Um, if you're into bergamot like me as well, again, it's a must try. Also, the orange blossom note is quite nice, and I do think the Almond in this is interesting as well. You don't get very pronounced almond notes without them being weird or strange or off-putting and I find this is definitely one of the most tolerable almond notes um, in a fresh fragrance I've ever smelled. Uh, also recommended for anyone looking for a high quality summer scent that isn't something that's overdone or a boring mainstream designer fragrance. Um, it's a little less accessible than the other Dior's so you know you're not going to worry about bumping into too many people wearing this. Overall thoughts, um, I'm very happy with my purchase. I'm very, very, very happy. Um, I'm looking forward to the other three scents. I haven't tried any of them but after this I definitely um, have them in my sights. Now, this I actually blind bought, um, used from someone on Facebook, and I'd never even heard of it. I'd actually never even heard of the Cruise Collection until I saw the bottle for sale. So I did a bit of research, and you know, luckily for me, of the four fragrances, this one without a doubt was the most appealing sounding to me, and uh, you know, it was the only one I had available, so I bought it like as soon as I read the notes and it took for ages to arrive and when I got it, oh my god, I was just blown away. Um, I love this. Uh, I Like I mentioned, the other three from the Cruise Collection, not quite as interesting to me in terms of notes, but I've heard some good things about a few of them, so I really do want to try them. So there you go, Escale e Portofino from Dior's Cruise Collection, this fantastic citrus summer scent. I would love to hear your opinions on this and especially the other three from the series. If you've tried them, what did you think of them? If you've tried this, what do you think? Thanks for watching YouTube and I'll see you again soon.